Hi everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I'll continue with the discussion of common source amplifiers uh, with source degeneration, as shown here, and uh, with finite R naught. In the previous lecture, I'd assumed that lambda equal to zero or R naught was infinity. In this lecture, I'll actually assume that R naught is finite. So to analyze this problem, uh, there is a standard way of analyzing this, which is what we do is we try to find the Thevenin equivalent of the circuit as seen by the load resistance. You can reduce this combination of uh, the source, source degenerated MOSFET and uh, source is the combination of the resistor and the MOSFET together and represented by a Thevenin equivalent or a Norton equivalent. And then you can we can eventually add the load resistance in parallel or uh, series depending on the model we choose Thevenin or Norton. So, to find the Thevenin equivalent, what I would do is, uh, this is in the presence of R0. See, and again, if, if R0 was infinity, the analysis was pretty simple. But in the presence of finite R0, the analysis can become slightly complicated. But we will see how to go around it, I mean, how to analyze it uh, with some known results that we have discussed so far. Uh, especially common gate amplifiers, I have analyzed it extensively. And I will be using some results from the analysis of common gate amplifiers here. So if you look at this structure, now first let's try to find the open circuit voltage, which is uh, what we do for the Thevenin equivalent. So I'll call it V0 as the open circuit, VOC as the open circuit voltage. Now if you, of course we can write KCLs and KVLs and solve this problems, but if you look at the circuit intuitively, since this node is open, the current flowing through this is zero. If this current is zero, then the current flowing through the resistor is also zero. The resistor, the source degenerate resistor, okay the source degenerating resistance R, I have assumed it as R in the last lecture, I, th I might have said it is RS, I mean it does not matter, it is just a notation. So now if I assume that current is 0, then the voltage drop across this resistor is also 0, because the same current flows through R as uh, the resistance R as well, so this voltage will be 0. So the circuit simply reduces to something like this. So your output voltage, the, the Thevenin voltage, open circuit voltage is simply minus of Gm R0 times Vi. This is your open circuit voltage. Now to find the resistance, the Thevenin resistance, you have to again uh, short circuit the input and see the resistance seen at the drain terminal to ground. So this is your R out here. So if you recall, we have already did this analysis, we have already uh, we have already carried out this analysis in common gate amplifiers. So this is like the output resistance of a common gate amplifier, gate is grounded with a finite source resistance RS. So if you recall, I will just write the final result which is R0 plus R into 1 plus Gm R0. So we said this resistance R here gets multiplied by the intrinsic gain of a common gate amplifier plus the R0 of this uh, MOSFET. So this is your R out. So by the Thevenin equivalent model, we can simply write it as you have Gm with a minus sign Gm R0 into Vi and an R out, a finite R out here. And then you can add RL in series. So now the gain for this circuit will actually be minus Gm R0 into RL by RL plus R out. Okay, that will be the expression for gain for this common source amplifier with source uh, degeneration. Now where is RS here? I mean there is no RS in this expression, but you should know that when RS or R, the source de degenerated resistance is missing, it is actually captured in R out. Now if your R out is much greater compared to RL, then this result can be approximated to minus Gm R0 by RL by R out. Again, uh, your R out, the expression for R out we have written it here. So this expression can be approximated, your R out can be approximated to Gm into R into R0. Okay, it can be approximated to this. So, if I assume Gm R, the product of G, the Gm into the source de degenerating resistance R, which is Gm into R is much greater than 1, then we can approximate R0, R out to Gm into R into R0. So, when I substitute that here, I will get the expression to be approximately as minus RL by R. So, which is what we derived in the last lecture. If you remember, we, we derive this intuitively, but you can get the same expression from this rigorous analysis as well. The other way is to actually uh, derive this expression for again using a Norton equivalent. This is again more 
prevalent because MOSFETs by in itself, if you see uh, MOSFETs by in itself for a transconductance devices, since MOSFETs by in itself for a transconductance devices, so you'll have to find the short circuit current. If I apply a VI here, so we can show the direction like this, so I can find the short circuit current. To find the short circuit current, uh, I'll just uh, use this fact that the current flowing through this that's into the drain and the you know or not combination is same as the resistance that's going to flow or the current that's going to flow through this resistance, the source degenerating resistance. So I can then use that. So all I need to do is if I find the voltage across uh, the, the source degenerating resistance, then I can divide it by the resistance to get the current flowing through this. And that voltage, uh, if you recall from one of the previous lectures, we have already anal analyzed a problem like this. This R0 can be modeled in parallel with R. So I can simply say that node voltage is going to be Gm into R parallel R0 by 1 plus Gm into R parallel R0. So this is the expression for the voltage across R. So this if you divide it by R times VI, I mean there is voltage VI here, times VI, this will be my short circuit current. Okay, this is the expression for short circuit current. I can actually rearrange these terms. So R parallel R0, if I expand it, you can actually show that. So this will be GM into R0. So this term, I'll, it's, it's a very simple derivation. You can actually show that this is R0 plus R into 1 plus R0, 1 plus Gm R0 into Vi. So this is the expression we will get. So this is nothing but Gm R0 upon R out into Vi. So this is your short circuit. And this, this should make uh, intuitive sense because this Gm R0 into Vi is your open circuit thevenin voltage divided by R out you get your not on current. Okay, so the same thing holds here as well. Now once you know this current, then you can again represent this by a small signal model given by this. So this will be your ISC and R out in this case will come in parallel with ISC and load resistance can be connected here. Okay, so again you can write the same expression. So your finally your expression for your voltage across the load resistance RL is simply going to be minus Gm R0 into RL by RL plus R out. So this is the expression. In the limit R tend RL tending to infinity, if you just open circuit it, the maximum gain you will get is minus Gm R0. This, this is like a intrinsic gain of a simple common source amplifier. Uh, it's as, as though like as though we haven't connected any source resistance at all. Okay, it's equivalent to that. And that's because this directly stems from the fact that we have open circuited the drain and therefore we are not letting any current through the MOSFET change. I mean, we are not letting this current through this MOSFET change. Uh, when I say the current, that's the current through the MOSFET, which is the GMVGS current and the current through R0. We are not letting that change because we have open circuited this node and therefore the current through the R also cannot change. So therefore the voltage across it also cannot change. So this, this node becomes AC ground. So that way the analysis of this circuit simply reduces to this. Okay. So that's the gain we get here if RL is infinity. If RL is finite, we have this general expression in the presence of uh, a finite R0. So we already discussed what are the benefits of choosing a common, uh, sorry, a source degeneration in a MOS circuit, mainly for linearity reasons and also getting a gain which is a ratio of two resistors and ratio of two resistors in integrated circuits especially, it's a very good thing because your gain can remain, your gain will remain constant. It will not be a process dependent number. When I say process, it's the MOS process dependent. So when you fabricate, you assume the resistors uh, vary in, in a similar manner. All the resistors that are fabricated together will have similar variations. Okay, so the ratio of two resistors is more or less a constant gain. You get a very good uh, constant gain out of a MOS device. Okay, uh, so that's it about uh, the intrinsic gain, I mean the, the gain of a common source conf configuration with source degeneration uh, with a finite R0. So I think I'll start with the discussion of uh, or probably we'll solve a few problems on single stage amplifiers in the next lecture and then move on to multi-stage amplifiers.